Hi everyone and welcome to this new video. It's a real pleasure for me to meet you again. <clears throat> Today we're going to talk about prevention and densitometry. And I'll start with prevention. One question that has often been asked is whether osteoarthritis of the fingers can come back once it has been treated. <clears throat> well, those who have seen all of my videos know the answer. Of course it can come back, especially in the presence of cold, like it has been the case with my right index finger, or by a too fatty or protein-rich diet, by mechanical repetitions and so on. But the good news is it can be prevented. How? Well, you might think about the splint, but precisely, it happens that the splints that I used at the beginning are no longer sold. <clears throat> the only spl splints I still can find are these ones, with openings here and reinforcements on the other side. <clears throat> these are less flexible and I can no longer adapt them to the needs of my fingers. So. As I did with the old ones, like I showed in video 23. So I found another idea. It's very simple, does not require a lot of time or material. And above all, I notice as I, <coughs> as I uh, progressed, uh, it acted as a good treatment too. Of course, it is slower than poultices. But do it for a year and you might be amazed at the results. What does it consist of? Well, simply in a daily finger bath while I drink my morning tea. I take a jar containing for one third, about one third, uh, salted boiling water. I hold my finger over the steam and turn it in all directions, do some gym. Hmm? And the finger starts to sweat. And as soon as it sweats, I remove the sweating with absorbent paper. <clears throat> and you can do this several times. The water cools very quickly. And as soon as it lets you put the finger in the water, well, continue exercises in the water. <clears throat> this can be done as long as the temperature is higher than the body temperature and this will have the effect of dissolve and remove the substances. <clears throat> and that's it. So it's between a steam bath and a hot water bath. It's not a steam bath because it's shorter and there is no towel above, but it's more efficient than a simple hot water bath. And the year of treating the finger this way is worth two two months certainly of poultices. The healing is nice, evenly on both sides, <clears throat> and up to you to further improve and accelerate through the diet, with exercises or with the splint. Hmm? The most important is this is something all can do, whether you have children or you have a job, <clears throat> you can always find 10 minutes a day for doing this. Another question that comes up often is why I prefer linden tea to oat straw tea. First of all, because I drank linden tea uh, before knowing nipe and before knowing oat straw, when my left index finger was healing spontaneously. As I, I uh, told this story, in uh, the video, <clears throat> the hidden idea of the outstrop poultices. So it's simply out of experience. This being said, we know there is another reason. Outstraw is a nourishing tea. It contains proteins and other nutrients. And so if you want to reach autophagy, it will be much slower to get in action. It's always the same. You have a series of options and you choose the ones that suit you best. I insist it is not needed to go to the extreme of a fast, but eating with measure, 
will of course contribute to the good evolution. And trying to have autophagy uh, doing some part of the job. Otherwise, you risk doing Sisyphus work. Hmm? <clears throat> so we'll now move on to densitometry. This time I took almost 5,000 international units of vitamin D and I followed my instinct for calcium and got 800 mg on average per day. Little infusion has also diminished only one third of the amount I was taking previously, say 50 to 60 milliliter in average per day instead of the 100 to 150 previously. And what are the results? Actually, to begin with, I must say these results are not reliable. Neither those of the densitometry of uh, 2019, nor those of uh, 2021. And why? Because the hospital had changed machines. And I learned, unfortunately too late, the densitometries that were done with different machines can't be compared. It's like comparing apples <coughs> to pears. Uh, you must know there are two machines, namely the Hologic machine and the Lunar machine. And for the first two densitometries, 2016 and 2018, the Hologic device was used. And for the last two, those of uh, 2019 and 21, the lunar device was used. And it seems the differences can be very large. Susan Brown speaks of 6%, others speak even of 10 to 15%. And especially for the region of the neck of the femur, the differences could be very weak. I have put links to a few articles on the subject in the, in the description box. So compared to the results of 2019, there seemed to be no spectacular improvement. It's still osteopenia, a bit better here, a bit less good there. I won't go into the details because it's not useful. I find it more important to convey uh, you must ask which machine they use because they don't tell you this in the hospitals and you lose simply your money if, if they mean between two densitometries they change machines, well you, you lose your money. But they, you can see it on the pictures. The best thing is to ask before you start. Okay, there is one last thing I want to attract your attention to, namely the nutrient silicon. It's very important for bone health, but stocks decrease in the body with age. Also, there is silicon in plants, like in oat, but it's very difficult to assimilate. So I think it's a good idea to, to do a cure of silicon from time to time, and that's what I'm doing now and I take the G5 silicon. Well, that's the most important for today. We will have to wait for the next incitometry, hoping that I find a hospital that uses the Hologic machine. Thank you for your attention. Until the next video, bye-bye.